for dilations 12-7 pardon the hat and the hair it's crazy hat day um so dilations you've been doing since you were in the sixth grade um their images used on a coordinate plane or off a coordinate plane and they're a form of transformation basic definition of a dilation is an image that is uh, similar but a change in size congruent is same size same shape Whereas a dilation is the same shape, but different sizes. A dilation can either grow your image or shrink your image. One of the ones, dilations we're most familiar with is when they dilate your eyes. When you go to the eye doctor where they put drops, you make sure pupils get really big so that the doctor can see into your eyes. You can also sit with a friend or a family member and turn off the lights and then have somebody quickly turn them on. And when you're staring at each other's eyes, you'll watch your eye pupils get really big and really small based on the light. They get really small to keep light from coming in, and they get really big to let more light in so you can see when it's dark. So that's dilation. So when you're looking at an image, well, that marker doesn't work. Okay, if you have this shape, and then you have this shape, those are a dilation of each other, okay? And you have what's called the image and the pre-image. The pre-image being the first one, and then the image being after you've dilated it. Okay? So then, a couple things you need to know is when you've done this before, you just had the images. Now we're actually going to have a point of dilation or a center point. I'm going to read the textbook definition to you, and then I'm going to explain it because this definition is really crazy and hard to understand. Okay? A dilation is a transformation in which the lines connecting every point P with its image P prime, all intersect at point C, called the center of dilation. All right, and the way he looks at that definition goes, what in the world did you just see? Say. So, for example, if we have the line P Q, okay, and we're going to dilate it based on whatever our scale factor is, that's not important what it is now, okay? And this is P prime, and this is Q prime, okay? The point of dilation is where these lines intersect, okay? Where all the points. So, if I were to take, and I drop my ruler, pardon me. Ah, found it. Sorry about that. You would take a ruler and connect to these points. And keep going, you need a longer ruler, all the way out, okay? And you do the same thing with these points. The point where they all intersect is your center of the dilation. Okay, where you could connect all the points. Now, if this was a triangle, for example, where it's an actual shape, let's say that was the triangle right there, then you would know that you're stretching the triangle out that direction. Okay, that makes sense. You can also do this with any shape. Okay, um, the triangle could have extended only. To this point right here, maybe this was the triangle. Well, then you would have to make sure that that point connected as well so that all the points connect. The reason why you have a point of dilation is to make sure that your figures, your image and pre-image, are similar. Okay? As we get more and more into geometry and shapes, we're going to be using more of our rulers and protractors and compass and different tools of geometry. So we're going to make sure you're used to and comfortable using them. All right. So our next vocabulary that we want to talk about is scale factor. Scale factor is the amount of dilation that you're going to use. Okay? And it's represented as a ratio. Okay, the length PQ over the length of your PQ prime. 
Generally, you'll see a, a scale factor as a whole number, maybe a scale factor of two, meaning your new image is going to be two times bigger. Or if you saw a scale factor of one half, then your image would be half that size. Okay? So that's your difference between scale factors. You can also have a negative scale factor. So if you had a scale factor of example two, then the new image is two times bigger. And say you had one half, then the new image is half as big. Okay? But if you had an image, a scale factor of say negative Five. Say you had negative five. Then, yes, your new image is five times bigger, but there's an extra little thing in there, the negative. Anytime you have a negative scale factor, write this down. Any time you have a negative scale factor, Which, whenever you see scale factor in the book, they represent it with the variable k, by the way, for scale factor. Um, negative scale factor, the image is rotated 180 degrees and dilated. Okay? So not only would it be five times bigger, it would also be rotated on the coordinate plane 180 degrees. And remember, anytime you're doing rotation, you always go counterclockwise because that's the way they number the quadrants. Why they numbered the quadrants that way? I don't know. I wasn't around when they did it. That's just what they are. Okay? So if your original image were right here, okay? Actually, let's draw a heart. I can draw that upside down. Or a tree. Let's go with a tree. There we go. Say that was your new image, or your first image. Your new image is going to be rotated 180 degrees and five times bigger. So, it looks something like that. A whole lot bigger and now upside down. Okay? So that's with your rotation. Now, when you're actually constructing a figure and making it two times bigger, you're going to use a compass. This is a compass. Okay? Real cheap. You can get them at a dollar store, I think. But be careful. This one breaks apart real easy. So, um, I'm going to actually stop this video and show you how to construct it on paper. And you can see how you would do that. But the basics of it are, if you have a triangle like this, connect all your points by extending them out. Like so. Okay? what? I went backwards. Because I ran out of room. So if you have your triangle here, and this is your point of dilation, because you've got to draw the bigger figure over there. Okay, so there's your point of dilation. Okay, and this center of dilation if you're not given a point already, you can pick the point anywhere you want. I could have put it here. I could have put it way out here. The whole purpose of the center of dilation is to make sure that all of your angles are exactly the same so that your figures end up similar. It's just a guide. It's not really important where, how far, how close is the triangle, as long as it's outside the triangle. And then notice I extended all my lines, and you should have used a ruler, but I did not. Okay? Then you take a compass, okay? And you would measure from the center of your dilation to the point. And then you can rotate it, your compass, and you make a little mark right there. Which, if I was using a dry erase marker, would look like that. Okay? Then you're going to do the same thing with each point. Now, my compass isn't big enough to do this because it only goes to six inches. But I would do it here at this point. Okay. And then I would 
going to do the same thing. I'll try and get this as close as I can because they aren't quite big enough. And that got you double because this was one length, two lengths. So it's a scale factor of two. One, two. Then you connect your points. And I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use a ruler. you have your triangle is two times bigger with this being the center of your dilation. Okay. You just saw on the board how I do it with a compass. I want you to just see the steps. This is on page 872 of your book. But these are the steps so you can see them as I was doing on the board because it was hard to see as I was standing in front of it. How you would mark each spot and then you connect the dots. Okay. Now, if you're doing this on a coordinate plane and you're just given points, for example, here's the vert vertices of point A, B, and C, and there it is in blue, and it gave you a scale factor of negative 2. So all you do is multiply each point by negative 2, okay? And that would give you your new points. And notice your new point is rotated in a counterclockwise direction 180 degrees, okay? And there we go. The other little trick, if you notice, is look on point A. 180 degree rotation, x is negative, y is positive. So on the new point, x is positive and y is negative. So my little trick to do 180 degree rotation is flip your signs. Okay, so see how they were both negative, now they're both positive. Both negative, now both positive. Negative became positive, positive became negative. So that's just a little trick that works to help you do a 180 degree rotation. All right, there's your notes.